Hello ladies and gentlemen, once again this is Jeremy Smith. As you guys know, we've been doing lots and lots of lighting videos lately. And whenever we looked at all the different lights uh, recently, like the Profoto B1 and the Interfit S1, as well as the Photix Indra 500, I mentioned to you guys that I would be taking a look at all the transmitters in a different video. And I've even kind of given you a hint about which transmitters I like the most and which ones I don't. But today I thought we would finally take a look at all these transmitters and I could show you more details about all of them. Okay, so from watching my other videos, you guys probably know exactly which one is my favorite unit. Um, we did speak about the transmitter for the Interfit S1, as well as the Profoto uh, Air Remote for the B1. But the Photix Odin holds a special place in my heart because that unit can do a lot of different things. Um, whenever we looked at the Interfit S1 and the Profoto B1 side by side, I mentioned how both of those transmitters are kind of closed systems. Basically, they're designed to work with their given light, but you can't really use them very, very much with uh, aftermarket uh, flashes and so forth. With the Interfit, you have no option for adding any type of radio re receivers at all at this point. On Profoto, you do have the ability to add receivers, but unfortunately, you have to sacrifice TTL and high-speed sync whenever you're using third-party flashes. The Odin system, though, is my favorite because you can actually do TTL or high-speed sync with Photix's own Indra lights, uh, or their Metro's uh, plus speed lights, or even with aftermarket speed lights just by adding a receiver. So their system is by far the best in that regard. Um, but the one thing I hadn't shown you guys so far has been the interface. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at all of these units, and I will go over the interface of each one. Okay, so taking a closer look at the Odin 2 transmitter, um, very clean and elegant design. This is this one's quite a bit of an improvement over the older version of this transmitter, I think. You know, the older version basically looks like this. You know, so it kind of sits on the camera straight up like that. The new one, as you can t see though, it has this nice sort of contoured design, so it's angled up towards you, so it's much easier to see and access the controls of. Um, it is pretty big, as you guys can tell. I mean, it's it's a pretty good sized unit. Both the Odin 2 and the original Odin both kind of just dwarf the uh, smaller Profoto Air Remote. We'll get to that in a second. So why do I love this transmitter so much? Um, well, if you look at the older version, of course I already told you guys one reason why I like it so much. It's because of the open system. You know, you have the ability to actually uh, you know, to actually uh, control other types of lights. You know, you can control the Indra Studio style flashes, or you can control Metro's speed lights, or Nikon or Canon speed lights with a receiver, and soon to be Sony. So you have lots and lots of flexibility as far as that's concerned. Um, but yeah, on this older unit, you know, you had basically three groups here, as you can see, A, B, and C. And then you had four channels. Now, the thing that wasn't so great about this is that basically this works like an old school Nikon SU800 uh, infrared based transmitter. So you basically have to just keep pressing the select button to scroll through all the options. So we kind of scroll through uh, our different groups and then we can change them in third stop increments like that. Keep pressing and we keep scrolling. Eventually we get over to the channel. Same thing on it. And as you can see, it's four channels and we keep pressing and keep scrolling and it's just kind of a constant loop. Whenever you're trying to go in here and change these things quickly though, it's not very, very intuitive. Uh, you know, you have to just basically keep on pressing. If you want to go in here and change whether or not a particular channel is on TTL or, uh, you know, or on manual, you select that particular channel, sorry, that particular group rather, and then you just hit your mode button like that and then now it's in manual. And then you press it again and it's off. So basically it's the same type of multi-scroll sort of setup. And then the on off button kind of acts as an enter so you can press there and now everything is all locked in. So that's basically how this works out. Uh, this unit, as you can see, if I can do this one handed, haha, has, uh, you know, double A batteries. So you can see how that works out. 
the new unit is exactly the same. So you can see that on it, other side, it also has a compartment for some double A's. Now the thing that's awesome about this new unit is that you don't necessarily have to worry about going in here and doing that constant multi-press. So now if we want to go in here and say we want to change the power of a given group, all we have to do is press the button for that group. If I want to change A, I press A, and then I just simply scroll to the right, scroll to the left. So very, very fast. It's still all adjusted in third stop increments, just like that. If I want to go in here and change C, press C, done. And basically that's how that works out. If you want to go in here and change the overall EV of your entire light setup, so let's say that you have like A set to where it's a little bit brighter, and then maybe your B is set someplace totally different, and then C is somewhere different again. Um, and then you say, you know what? I want to have my entire light setup drop in power by one EV, or increase in power by one EV. Um, all you have to do is just press the middle select button here, and then you see the flash exposure compensation. And that will, that will bring up your overall light setup up in brightness or down in brightness, but still maintain the same exact relationship between all your groups, which is pretty awesome, I think. So that works out very well there. Um, on this newer Odin 2 transmitter, uh, it does have additional channels now. So instead of just having the channels 1 through 4, we now have channels 1 through 32. So what we do to do that is we press right here. We can go into our menu. And you can see that we're on channel 1 now. Um, but yeah, as you can see, I can select all the way up to channel 32. So we have even more options to be able to work with. You can also have more than one user on each channel because there's also a digital ID associated with each of these channels as well. So for example, I could be on channel 32 and then I could put in a four digit digital ID and you know, me and a friend could both be on channel 32 but I could have my ID and they could have theirs. And so yeah, you have a really, really high amount of possible combinations and such that you can have this set on and not have to worry about any type of interference or anything like that. So that's pretty, pretty awesome if you ask me. Uh, this unit also, let me see here, of course that's our option for our overdrive sync. Uh, let's see what we'll get out of this. So very, very straightforward as far as all this works. Of course, the two additional groups that we have, D and E, those don't work on the original one through four channels. You have to be on channel five or higher to access those. So initially I was on like channel one and, I, and we didn't see those, but now that I'm in channel 32, you can see that we actually have even more groups in here that I can go in and select. So pretty awesome stuff. Uh, the other thing that they changed on this unit is they actually gave it a AF illuminator now. And this is a pretty nice thing to have, uh, especially if you're using speed lights. If you're using something like the Odin transmitter, uh, sorry, not Odin, this is an Odin transmitter, duh. If you're using something like one of the Indra studio flashes, uh, this may not be as useful because those have a modeling light. But if you're using speed lights, the infrared illuminator is especially useful for those situations. Um, of course, USB port up here, or rather on the side here for firmware updates and so forth. So pretty solid unit all in all. I definitely like this. Um, it is kind of large, but eh, it is what it is. Definitely a big update over the older version. With the newer transmitter, you can actually still use Photix's older receivers as long as you just intend to not use the digital ID and use just channels uh, one through four. If you want to access all the newer channels and the digital ID, then you can pick up some of their newer Odin 2 receivers as well. So that's how that works out. Um, I actually had plans to pop this on the camera for you guys tonight, but I realized that I had a bit of an epic fail. Unfortunately, I ended up grabbing the Canon version of the transmitter. And anytime Canon is involved, there's an epic fail. Uh, <laughs> no, just kidding. That Canon joke is especially funny as I filmed tonight's video with the C100 Mark II, but that's another story for another day. <laughs> okay, so comparing this to the Profoto Air Remote, um, very, very similar design. I still, as I mentioned in my other video, you know, I still give this Odin 2 and it, 
you know, a little bit of an, of an edge here. Um, obviously, it has more uh, channels, it has more groups, and it has the ability to do the digital ID. And of course, it's not as much of a closed system. We can still use this with our speed lights with the appropriate receivers. And we're not just limited to firing those speed lights. We are actually, uh, we actually have the ability to go in there and change all the power settings in TTL, just like we're using one of Photix's own lights. So yeah, the Odin has got some really, really big advantages to it. On the Profoto, I mean, the thing I do like about the Profoto is that its size. I mean, it's much, much smaller. I know it sounds kind of silly, but I do appreciate the smaller size of it. This one, though, uses AAA batteries. And yeah, I mean, I know that. Jeremy, why did you lock this on here? It's not necessary. We're not going anywhere. We're just making a video. Ah, there you go. It wasn't locked after all. But yeah, this one does use AAA batteries. So a little bit smaller there. Now, one thing I will say about this unit is that I found that it is the most reliable trigger I've ever used. Um, it definitely has, has the Odin system beat there. The Odin system is by no means terrible, but this thing literally never misfires. The only time I've ever had this thing misfire is if the batteries are low in it, which brings me to another point. On our Photix transmitter, we actually do have a battery indicator there, so we can always see what the state of the charge is. On this unit, you actually have no idea how the battery is until it actually starts flashing low battery. But I've noticed that it actually starts to misfire well before that low battery symbol shows up. Now, the thing that's funny is, even when this does start to misfire, when I say start to misfire, um, I mean like five shots out of 200. So, I mean, it's still extremely reliable, but yeah, you can definitely tell when its batteries are getting low. Whenever the batteries are hot though, I mean, this thing just doesn't misfire at all. So it's extremely reliable. It's the most reliable radio trigger I've ever used actually. Very similar affair in terms of adjusting the power settings. You know, we have our A and we have our B and our C and so forth. Now, this is one area where people get very, very, very confused with this transmitter. Um, and they also get confused with the Photix transmitter. So big thing to keep in mind about both these, the Photix is primarily designed for speed lights. That's what they were thinking whenever they designed this. They were thinking about speed lights. This transmitter was designed for studio flashes. And so that's the primary thing they were thinking about when they made this one. And so because of those inherent design differences between these two units, they behave drastically differently from each other. This unit right here, the Profoto, on TTL, it doesn't do what you would expect it to do. Normally, if we have a trigger on TTL, we expect to go in here and press up or down, or in this case, minus or plus, to change our power. And then we expect to see a difference. That is exactly how it works on the Photix. That's how it would work with speed lights. That is not how it works on this unit. On this unit, whenever you have it on your camera, you actually, um, if you're just using like, uh, say, say for example, using one flash and you want to be able to change the compensation on TTL, you actually do not use the compensation on here. You leave it on zero. You change the flash exposure compensation using the setting on your camera. If you are using multiple lights with this transmitter in TTL, and let's say you have two lights, one on A, one on B, you can go in here and you can change their power difference. So say for example, let's just say that you wanted to have B be a little bit darker than A. You could come in here and you could minus it down like this and you could leave A where it is. And that would result in a one stop difference between those two lights. Um, if you wanted to go ahead and raise A more, you could. You could raise it just like this. Now we would have a two stop difference between these two lights. But that would only change the relationship of the lights with each other, not the overall brightness in the photograph. Once again, even if we were doing this with two lights, to change the overall brightness, we would change the flash exposure compensation on the camera. If you get this system and you start playing with these settings, expecting it to change the brightness of your flash, it won't, and you'll be very frustrated. So just keep in mind that that's how this system works. On the Photix system, um, it basically works the way you would expect in that regard. 
Um, you know, if you want to be able to make A darker or brighter, you would press A and make it darker or brighter. And that's just how it works. And then as I showed you guys a moment ago, you have that overall uh, flash exposure compensation option there. On the Pro Photo though, you don't do this. You use your camera's flash exposure compensation. People get confused on this transmitter though when it comes to using the, the Indra Studio flashes because they're used to a system like this one. So whenever we're using this with the Indras, you actually leave the Indra light set to TTL because this system basically, remember, it's designed for speed lights. So how this system works with the speed light is it basically tricks the speed light into thinking that it's sitting on top of, your, on top of a camera. So that way, uh, in order for this to work, that speed light actually must be set to TTL. So with the Indra Studio flashes, since this system is designed around that whole premise of using speed lights on TTL, that's why the Indra light also must remain on TTL whenever you're making the adjustments. So you leave that Indra light on TTL, and then you come in here into your Odin, and you change whichever group your Indra Studio flash is on, you change that to manual. So we go here, let's just imagine that our Indra is on, say, channel A, we would select A, then we would actually come in here and we'd hit our mode button and now it's on manual. And then we would basically go in here and dial it up and dial it down. And we wouldn't see that power adjustment happen at all in the light because remember the light is just gonna say TTL. But in order for this system to work, the flash stays on TTL and then this transmitter, even though it's transmitting a specific power level, it must be transmitting that information across TTL in order for all this to work. So that's the confusing bit about this. On the Pro Photo, since it's designed more for studio style flashes, if you put it over to manual, it's going to work the way you would expect it to. Um, basically, you actually do have your uh, you actually do have your flash set uh, on the Pro Photo system. Uh, there's actually not really uh, it, the way it seems, there's not really a whole lot of TTL language per se built into the flash. It's happening more in this transmitter. So the flash stays as it is, and then basically this transmitter tells it what to do. And if you are in manual, you can change the power settings here, just like that. So that's basically how that works out. Now, the downside of this system is that unlike the Odin, as you can see on our Odin here, once again, come back to that, on our Odin, you can see if we actually have a given power set, we can see what that power is at at any point in time. Uh, and of course, it's in third stop increments. This unit does allow us to change our power in tenth stop increments. As you can see, how this basically works is if you press it, if you give it a quick little press like that, it will go up or down in a tenth. If you give it a long press like this, it will go up or it will go down in a full stop increment. So that's how that works out. The thing that's a downside though here is that you don't see that power setting on the transmitter all the time. You only see the exact power on the back of your flash unit. So pros and cons. Um, this unit does not have a AF illuminator, but once again, you know, this is designed more for studio style flashes that have modeling lights. So I can see why there's no F illuminator on this. So as you can see, kind of different de design philosophies between both these units. Um, the Photix unit also allows you to control the zoom of flash heads. Because remember, this is designed primarily for speed lights, or at least it was originally. So you can see how that's all changed right there. Obviously, you won't find this setting on the Pro Photo. And this is actually a Canon unit I have, so we do have a high-speed sync button. Um, on Nikon, that high-speed sync is triggered from the camera, not from a button on the transmitter itself. So yeah, all in all, there's, thing, there's different things I like about both these units. Oh yes, one thing I meant to show you too. On the, Odin, on the older Odin transmitter, you can only go in and turn your Indra modeling light on or off. Um, however, on this newer unit, if we press our modeling light button there, we actually do have the ability to go in here and change modeling light brightness, which is really, really cool. 
that's actually something that you can't even do on the Pro Photo remote. Even though it's designed for more studio style flashes, we only have the ability to turn a modeling light on or turn a modeling light off with it. We can't actually change the modeling light brightness. So all in all, pretty interesting system. Uh, they both have their pros and their cons. Um, yeah, what? let's see here. Every time I think I've come to the last thing, I always think of something else here. One other thing that's interesting on this uh, Odin is that you can also kind of mix up your groups. So if you have like your A group, say, say for example, your A group is your main light, um, you might actually want to set it on TTL. So you could do that. We'll go over to TTL there. But let's just imagine that on B we have like a rim light or a hair light or something. Well, you know, the flash system can't really TTL meter a rim light. So it would make sense to have that in manual. So that's one thing that's cool about this unit is that we could go in here, we could go to B group, we could actually change this over to manual and then be able to manually control this group while the other one remains on TTL. So that's how that works on this one. On Pro Photo, um, there's not really a very, very obvious way of doing this. Um, there is a little bit of a workaround. A lot of people actually, in reviews I've read in the past, I've noticed that a lot of people say, well, on Pro Photo, you can't have one flash on TTL and one flash on manual. Um, that's not entirely true. So what you can do here is, Pro Photo, they actually have uh, several different groups that they use. Uh, we have A, B, and C. And I believe there's two other groups. There's a D and an E, if I recall. How this works is, though, those first three groups, A, B, and C, are the only groups in Photo's system that actually support TTL. But their flashes can be set to any of the other groups. So if you wanted to, even though this isn't as intuitive, if you wanted to, and let's just say we were in the same scenario, we had like a main light on A, and let's just say that we have this on TTL like this, we could have that main light on TTL and set to channel, sorry, set to group A, but we could take our other flash and just set it to one of the non-TTL TTL groups. Like we could set it to, to group D, for example, and it could still be on manual. The only downside to doing this is that while it does work, you just won't have any remote power adjustment over group D or group E on this particular transmitter. So it is a workaround, but it actually is possible to have some groups on TTL and some groups on manual. Um, I believe back whenever I made my initial uh, Photix uh, Indra 500 video, I believe that was one of the cons that I listed for the Pro Photo system was that you couldn't do that. But yeah, I now know that you can do it, but it's a little bit of a little bit of a workaround in order to make that happen. I know there was a ton of information in this video, guys. Um, definitely write me in the comments below if you have any additional questions. I hope this helps. Um, I've had lots and lots of uh, people asking me things about, uh, especially the newer Odin 2. And there's still some things I need to sort out with the Indra. But uh, definitely write me in the comments if you have any questions. Don't forget to check me out on all the popular, uh, popular social media channels, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all that good stuff. I am known as... Photog J the Great. <laughs> uh, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, guys, this is Jeremy Smith, signing off.